I've made a tool that asks for a YouTube link and makes a full article out of the video, no matter how long it is. Here's how it works. It gets the YouTube video's text and sends it to a program like ChatGPT. This program then turns the text into an easy to read article. But there is a limit to how much text we can use. If the text is too long, we get an error message from the OpenAI API. For the 3.5 model, we can use up to 4,096 tokens, which is about 3,000 words. This means we can't process a 20 minute video all at once. I got the idea to split up big chunks of text from David Shapiro's video. That inspired me to make this website. Simply using AI to make articles from a short description isn't great. It just makes text based on other text and could make your blog lose its index. But if you want to change your content from one format to another, this tool is really useful. To make this project, I used Next.js, TypeScript, the OpenAI API, and libraries like React icons, YouTube thumbnail, Axios, YouTube caption scraper, styled components and express. First, let's talk about the front end. I won't go into much detail because it could just be a simple HTML page with JavaScript or Python, but I think it's interesting just to show how Next.js can be used in a dynamic way. Starting off, I use the YouTube thumbnail library to get the video thumbnail from the URL that the user types in. There are several states here that lets the page update according to the user's search. And then we get to the most important function. It's the handle submit which calls the API. In the article TSX file, we start by importing OpenAI Express and the YouTube Caption Scraper library. I made this through trial and error to make the output look like a human wrote it. Next, I made this generate article function. We'll use it a lot while making the article, and it's just a standard way to call the OpenAI API in JavaScript. Now let's talk about the main function. We start by filtering bad calls and then call the get subtitles function using English as the main language. We map the subtitle to only use text and not show those timings of each part. Then we make a block of up to 20 elements each. Each block has an average of 235 characters and we put them all into an array. Then we make some let variables just to go against common sense and good practices of programming. And after that, we start our first loop. Here we use this prompt variable to do a mini machine learning process. First, we place an example text, always following the same pattern, even with the same number of slash ends. We only put one slash n after the instruction and two slash ends after the answer. I think this helps the AI understand more of what we want. We place our first block of content here and send it to the generate article function, along with a dynamical max length variable. This variable tells OpenAI API the maximum number of tokens we want. The first text block processed by OpenAI comes back and goes into the previous chunk variable and the article variable. In the second round of the for loop, we give a different prompt. Now we give context with the last block we informed, as well as the response we got. So from the third round onwards, we always send prompts that are directly related to our last blocks. This way, we get text that makes sense with each other, even if it's from a very long video. One problem with this method is that some articles will repeat terms between paragraphs. For videos up to 2,500 characters, I found a solution. Put the whole generated article back into a new call for OpenAI data. This helps form a well-structured article. With the use of GPT-4, we can include much larger blocks of text and get much better results. This project can be improved a lot and might be very outdated in the future where AI is improving all the time. So that's it for this video. See you next time.